Last time we looked at three types of trend filter and why the use of these in your trading strategies can have a significant and positive impact on your results. This time we'll look at one of these in a lot more detail and consider specifically how to interpret the information it provides us with to best advantage. And if you do this correctly, the indicator will tell you when the probabilities are in your favour and when you shouldn't trade, when those probabilities are against you. Let's take a look. So the indicator that we'll be looking at today is called the Arun indicator and this is a really great example of a trend filter. So this follows on nicely from the last episode where we looked at what a trend filter is and how we should use those trend filters. So the reason we use them of course is to categorize the underlying asset. And by doing that, the filter can inform us about whether our system is allowed to trade or not at this point in time. And the reason we need to do this, of course, is because some strategies only work well when the market is trending, while others work well when the market's in a trading range. And so we need to determine what the market's doing before we can then act on that information. But with trend filters, it's a slightly more sophisticated rule than for volatility filters, for example. A volatility filter simply tells us whether we can trade or we can't. But with a trend filter, as well as doing that, it also informs us about whether we are allowed to trade long or only allowed to trade short, depending on the direction of the trend. And so we looked last time at three types the single line non-directional, the single line directional, and the dual line indicators. And we talked about how a good example of a type one trend filter is the ADX mainline. Type two would be the stochastic indicator. And for type three, a good example is the Arun indicator. And this is an indicator I really like. And so it's this one that we're going to focus our efforts on. So before we get into the actual charts, let's remind ourselves about how this works. So the indicator has two lines, an up line that you see in green and a down line that you see in red. And whenever the green line is above a certain level, so let's say 70, this is an indication that the underlying asset is trending upwards. In a similar way, when the down line is above the level of 70, this is an indication that the asset is in a down trend. And then in this middle region, you see here where neither the up line or the down line are above that level, this is an area of uncertainty. So we're not in a trend, but we're not really sure what's happening. It could be a trading range, for example, or it could be a change in direction of the trend. So the underlying asset might be going directly from an uptrend to a downtrend state, and it's in that transitory period. Now, in a moment, we're going to look at this indicator on some real charts. But first of all, a bit more information about the Arun indicator. First of all, the calculation behind this is really simple. And those who've watched my other episodes know that I'm a really big fan of simple calculations, understandable calculations, because they're the ones in my experience that tend to work best. The Arun is also a good indicator because it's range bound. So it has a maximum value of 100 and a minimum value of zero. And that remains the case regardless of the asset class that you're using this indicator on. And also regardless of the time frame you're using, it's always the same. And this of course makes it incredibly useful for using in a systematic way. So as well as telling us if there is a trend, it also helps us to determine the strength of that trend as we'll see in a moment. So what's the underlying premise behind this indicator? Well, it's the fact that in strong uptrends, 
we see new highs occurring very frequently as the price action continually extends the previous highs. And vice versa, in a downtrend, we see a lot of new lows occurring very frequently. And that's the whole basis of this indicator. Because what it does in its calculation is measure the number of bars since the last high that it saw and the number of bars since the low. And it does this over a given period of time and the default for the Arun is 25 bars. So it's these two lines, the Arun up, which is usually in green, and the Arun down, which is usually in red, that measure the strength of the downtrend or the uptrend. And in terms of the detail of that, this is what it looks like. So the Arun up is based on the number of bars you're looking at minus the number of periods since the high. And then to normalize that and allow it to be a range bound indicator, it's divided by 25 and multiplied by 100. And so of course, what this means is if the high of the 25 periods is occurring right now on bar zero, then it will have a value of 100. If the high was 25 periods ago, indicating we're definitely not in an uptrend, then the value of the Arun up would be zero. So hopefully you can see exactly how these lines are calculated. And of course, it's the opposite for the Arun down, where we're looking at the number of periods since the low. And so the kind of pattern you typically get is this one you see on the right and where the green up line is in those upper regions above a level of 70. That's therefore an indication that we're in an uptrend, as you can see. When the red down line is in that region, it's an indication of a downtrend. And you can see when that red down line is in that region above 70, the price action is in this relatively strong downtrend. And what you'll notice in this middle region where neither of those lines are above the level of 70, the price action isn't really going anywhere. So let's take a look now at a few more examples of how you can use this indicator. And it is quite flexible and you'll need to decide exactly how you're going to use it yourself. So one of the areas of flexibility is the level that you use to make your decisions. So in the region I've highlighted on the chart here, this is where the Arun down indicator is above the level of 50. Now there is one very small duration of time when the Arun down line does dip below the level of 50 here, but you'll notice at that time, the Arun up indicator is also very low. So you could classify this entire region as being in a downtrend. Likewise, if we use that same rule for when the green Arun up line is in that region, this would be an indication of an uptrend, which on the whole you can see is the case. So that's one way of using the indicator. But because we've used that level of 50, we're also including some weaker trends in the categorization. And so what you might prefer to do is to set your level higher. Now, if we do that based on the level of 70, this is what we now get. So both the red area and the green area have become smaller, as you'd expect. But I think you'd agree they're doing a better job of classifying when we are in an uptrend and when we're in a downtrend. And then we've got this region in the middle where neither of the lines is predominantly over that level. And as you can see from the price action of this yellow area, the price is actually in a trading range. And so the classification there also was much better. And now that we've completed that classification, we can now use it to inform our trading rules. So for example, if we do classify an uptrend, then the rule would be that our system is only allowed to take long trades in the direction of that trend. If we've classified it as a downtrend, the rule here is that we're only allowed to trade short in the direction of the trend. And if the trading system that we're using is based on a trending strategy, 
then of course when the market isn't classified as either upwardly trending or downwardly trending then no trades are allowed at all like in the period you see here in yellow and so by taking this approach we've filtered out certain trades which now do not get opened whereas before we were using the trending filter they would have opened but if we've done this right then we've turned the probabilities in our favor and we'll now have a much better system so in the next episode we will start to integrate the rules between our triggers and our trend filter in order to specifically build a trading system based on those two factors and if that episode's already available now then you can see a link to it right here also if you're not already familiar with darwin x then you can use the link underneath here to find out more about what we do and the benefits of being a customer of darwin x and so now until next time trade safe